Sipa and an administrator, par excellence. The occasion is momentous by virtue of its academic and intellectual character and also by virtue of the caliber of persons raising it. While we enthusiastically await the unveiling of the intellectual female Igele at the appropriate time, I crave your indulgence once more to let you know that this enterprise for which we are here gathered was conceived of many years ago by the same trade leather who is delivering the intellectual baby today. I cannot end this message of welcome without expressing the immense gratitude of the organizing committee to the management of the institution for making this dream come true and for the opportunity giving the committee to start in this capacity. The committee appreciates all who contributed one way or the other towards the realization of this current project. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, do you know that there are many unknown facts and unanswered questions about technical and vocational business education in Nigeria? I humbly enjoin all of us to relax and get the hard facts and the answers from the rich intellectual menu prepared for us by the consummate scholar, Dr. Mrs. C.U. Njoko. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. God bless all of us. Thank you. Please put your hands together for us. Today's distinguished lecturer. And to do that is my humble self. Ladies and gentlemen, just relax and listen, and maybe you will learn what makes this uh, lecturer for today a special personality. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have copies, you can look in as I present it. This is the citation on Dr. Mrs. Sele Yu Njoku, Rector Federal Polytechnic Nekedo Were, on the occasion of the first inaugural lecture of the Federal Polytechnic Nekede. Today is Tuesday, the 24th of November, 2015, and we are here at the 1,000 capacity auditorium. Mr. Chairman, on today's occasion, distinguished inaugural lecturer, distinguished chief lecturers, erudite professors, eminent scholars, your royal highnesses, special honor guests, principal officers of this institution, dean directors and committees, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, greatest Nigerian students. Upon the greatest Nigerian students, upon greatest, upon greatest Nigerian students, thank you very much for my presence. The preamble, without the director of doubt, the hallmark of attendance in scholarship for any self-respecting lecturer and educational institution the world over is measured by the propensity and capacity to profess intellectual competence in their areas of specialization, whether in the classroom, in sundry research, or in other fields of pressure. That is why inaugural lectures are regarded as the quintessential performance in exhibition of a lecturer's scholastic acumen. But to also evident that the lecturer not only talks the talk, but also walks the walk. Today we are going to be regaled with such a performance, but what is unique about today's experience is its innovativeness. That today history is being made at the Federal Polytechnic Naked. Because for the very first time in the 32 years of existence of this institution, an inaugural lecture represents of this post at the event is a better company. But what makes this history extraordinary is that it is the first of the first a product of visionary and exemplary leadership, and a relating quest to sustain the tradition of academic excellence and not 
character of this registry. President, Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, eminent scholars, the Royal Highness, they grant me the honor and privilege to extend the praise, the first of the best, by inviting with great humility and respect the distinguished inaugural lecturer, the rector, who is already standing. Lecture. Rector. Distinguished Chief Lecturers, Professors, Eminent Scholars, Your Royal Highnesses, here stands before us our revered colleague, clothed in our usual humble men, but represented in glittering feats achieved within a lifespan of committed industry, scholarship, and leadership ventures. Born into a noble of the family in the overrun of SGM State, the young seller, as she is from the fold, started a industrial journey into the recondite terrain of education, when her parents seemingly perceived of the manifest intellectual and leadership celebrity that her young daughter was eventually become, enrolled her into the primary school. The record time, the young seller was her little and came out with flying colors and moved naturally into the secondary school to continue with the next phase of her education. Logically, the university awaited his time, and he wrote the way to get by getting the vision into a much better university's area. This foundation laying aspect of our education was successfully completed when he graduated with the PPS honors in 1983, degree in professional and technical education. In 1990, he obtained a master's degree from the University of Nigeria, Suga, and in 1997, he landed the biggest one. A Doctor of Philosophy degree in Vocational and Technical Education, Business Education Option from the same investor. These achievements include in her the scholastic and intellectual franchise to roar as a lion in her fields of specialization. Neither was she done yet. In 1998, this eight head intellectual, if I may take that liberty, went back for a postdoctoral professional diploma in computer operation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let us now visit the first of the facts. That's great. Really. By this I mean that I am privileged to present for your parents the transfer and parallel record set by this artist in the pursuit of her career. Recall that she went for a postdoctoral diploma in computer operation. This was at the period when the majority of our classmates and colleagues were yet to differentiate between a computer and a color TV. <laughs> Many thought that a mouse was synonymous with a rat. But this professor's scholar realized that to fully accomplish the vision that was clearly eight in advance, he had to prepare his way for that future with all seriousness and she has just pursued it by equipping herself with all the prerequisite weaponry in her intellectual arsenal. That was her motive for the future. Recall also that having taken up appointment as a lecturer in the Department of Secretarial Administration, now called OPM, of this institution in 1991, Dr. Mrs. Sele Yung Chok is on record as being the fastest finger in short time. Fastest finger in short hand in that department. A round of applause for that. And it's not surprising that, that she pioneered the transformation in this country of state action and the consultory group to become OTM, Office Technology and Management. These two girls together for that. The chief demands of the computer aid in which her students will be operating. Now let's go to the other side. And as I recall, please give me a round of applause. For each one, we will give you one a round of applause. By taking the doctor, by taking her doctorate in 1997, Dr. Mrs. Selenium Dr. became the first lady holder in her department. The first inequitable the first Nigeria TV project manager in the revitalization of the school of professional education in Quetzalcoatl, the Southeastern Zone. The first woman in charge of the Nigeria TV project. In the revitalization of technical and 
Benjamin Sedon Polytechnics in Nigeria. First of dancing female dean of student affairs of Federal Polytechnic Nekede Oweri. First president of the Reductible Federal Polytechnic Nekede Oweri Women Association of February. In the forefront of propagating technological education, who has stewardship in this institution. Second, within the cognitive domain, as an active educationist, one of our objectives is human resources development, which has to do with utilizing and priming the mental faculty to become citizens. She believes that for capacity development to be accomplished in the country, 
There must be adequate human resources to drive it, and it must come as an advocate of diverse sectors of the economy, of which the polytechnic system is a key step. The preponderance of training and retraining programs of our cities and within the net is a case in point. The Office of Polytechnic Development, OPD, which is established, is a director and talent not only to address this ideal, but also to talent hunt and develop lesson skills. Moreover, to consider, encourage, and sponsor the first ever Founders Day lecture and carnival, calling night 2014, in the history of this is the speech volume of us who try to provide an enabling program for realization of staff and students after a committee in Brazil. For though the motor of uh, boxes, Benjamin Dom, the hardest worker in the George Orwell animal farm is I will work harder. Remember, the request of money the family, that there should be sugar after the revolution was also well received by the animal here in this institution. We are always assured of that sugar. Because the second edition of the Polynet 2015 Carnival and Brothers Day Festival is scheduled to be sent the 10th and 11th of December 2015. This will tell you to the next domain. Remember, there are three domains. The third is the affected domain. Why Dr. Mrs. Selene will drop the decision in fact to positive from people's education generally? And in the love of the gold child in particular, she has zero tolerance to any form of criminal tendency or moral tendency, such as indecent, crisis, cultism, and prostitution, determining human practice among Sarah or students. Ultimately, Dr. Mrs. Selene Ubrock is a dedicated environmental minister. So, did you ever discover this girl composed Amazon angry? Did you ever see her angry? It is likely to be with someone who has somehow entered the government. She will be mad at you. That is why this campus is, I think, the most the cleanest campus in Nigeria. And the home front, she has also put her nephew, married to Professor Jew Education Job, former Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, or where? Former Honorable Commissioner for Education, former commission, Honorable Commissioner for Lands, and recently a governorship aspirant. They have led the party. Two young men and two ladies, all successful graduates. The lead is also a lady of nine of seven women. In conclusion, the chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, the test of the problem is in the kitty. And I believe that we have salivated enough for the special view. But I think it is therefore to present to you the chair of today's stage, the distinguished first inaugural lecturer in the federal politics. present the first inaugural lecture in the Federal Polytechnic Negative. The amazing Amazon, the astute administrator, the servant leader. Am I hearing some applause? The benevolent mother, the everyday scholar, 
the most senior serving chief lecturer, the first female rector of the Federal Polytechnic Mechanism, Dr. Mrs. Selenu with a song. Count your blessings, claim them one by one. Count your blessings, say what God has done. Count your blessings, claim them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Thank you very much. The chairman of this chairman, Dr. Kadiru. I also welcome the minister's rep and a member of our council, a member of EFC, Mr. Folorisho. Permit me also to welcome other distinguished personalities here, but I will not go through all the protocol. But especially, I have to welcome the chairman of the council, our dear Dr. Ato and wife. He was the chairman of the 12th governing council. And I also welcome members of the 11th governing council here present, and members of the 10th governing council here present. Dr. Jacob is here. Dr. and Mrs. Dada is here too, and some others. I have to welcome His Royal Highnesses and Lords. I welcome you. Please permit me to recognize in a special way members of the Abel family. They are here in full swing, like children say. They are here. The professors are here, the doctors are here. I welcome you all. The professors, the rectors, provosts, the vice chancellor's representatives from other institutions permit me to hide under that and recognize you. Our first, if I, mean, I say nothing, I think it will be dangerous. Father Lex. Wow. Thank you, Father. And other friends. Father Wes, they are like me, I won't say anything. <laughs> so I welcome everybody. My husband, Professor Chut in Joko. Please permit me to start this lecture. This is the first inaugural lecture of this great institution, and I've chosen the topic technical and vocational education and the business education question. Please, you have to be first. We have the preamble. What a great day. A day when I have been asked to take the first shot of the inaugural, of the first inaugural lecture of this great city guide of higher learning, east of the Niger. The federal polytechnic lecture the world that is almost 37 years old. To me, being the first inaugural lecturer means or makes it easier for others who would come after this to learn from the challenges I will face today. This may be in form of procedures or organization, 
but not on what I have been trained on or on the way to deliver it to the people who are gathered here today to witness this great occasion in the history of this great institution. Sometime in 2003, I wrote a proposal to the bear management stating that as polytechnic strive to improve on their academic standards and aspire to play equal and the privileged status for the universities, it is desirable that they adopt those academic cultures that ascribe to universities their unique nature. One of such academic cultures is the inaugural of public lecture presentation which is a common practice in the universities and which few polytechnics have not adopted. I also added that the polytechnic academy has high caliber staff who can compete very separately with the universities in terms of research and publication of production output. Hence, our staff need a forum within which they can give the enormous knowledge and accumulated experiences with which their colleagues and the general public. The management then bought the idea and the committee was set up, but the proposal did not eventually see the light of the day for very obvious reasons to make progress. But the inaugural to public lecture did not hold due to some official obstacles. In 2013, we brought back the committee still headed by Dr. Asoko with other members who have worked tirelessly and they have brought us here today. The Polytechnic has made a history today as it dishes its ever inaugural lectures. Consequent upon this, every qualified individual in this Polytechnic or outside is welcome to an inaugural of public lectures as this would be put or as two or three times a year or as may be decided by the academic board. For the chairman and members of this committee, I owe you a lot and pray to witness your own a lot of public lecture someday. Let's go to the dish. The chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I've decided to set on the topic technical and vocational education and the business education question for a number of reasons. Firstly, the relationship between vocational and technical education and business education is often not well understood, not only by the general public, but also by some of our educated elites. Secondly, the role which business education plays in socio-economic development of any country is far less understood. The result is that most often some experts fail to appreciate that business education as is an integral part of vocational and technical education. Before we dive uh, we then further into these relationships, let us have a look into the concepts of vocational education. Concepts of vocational of technical and vocational education. We have so many authors that have just read a few of them. Many notable authorities have been examine the concept of vocational education. For instance, the National Policy on Education 2004 viewed technical and vocational education in a comprehensive manner as both aspects of the educational process involving in addition to general education, the study of technology and the science and the application of practical skills. Attitude, understanding, and knowledge related to occupation in various sectors of the economy and social life. This type of education is what I view as an integral part of general education as need, a means of preparing the occupational skills and for effective participation in the world of work. An aspect of lifelong learning and environmentally sound sustainable development at the method and the validation for that. We have other definitions. Let me go to the next part. One of the pioneers of vocational education in Nigeria, the late professor of the lighter in 1985, also the 
find vocational education and education that fits one into the intricate experience of the real world through the acquisition of relevant knowledge and skills. To him, it is the job of oriented training designed to develop the appropriate knowledge, skills, attitude, and understanding in all situations. Vocational education is also a theoretical and practical instruction given to those who are going to be employed in commerce and industry of any type of enterprise using tools and machinery for the operation, production, presentation, and distribution of tools and services. That is an interrupt. Now, let us still go down. Now, we can see the definition. From all these definitions and conceptions, one comes to the inexplicable conclusion that vocational education or big business education in fact is geared towards the acquisition of practical skills and knowledge and attitude as well as world around an individual. Indeed, from an overall viewpoint, most of all the discussions about entrepreneurship and its potential for skills acquisition, job creation, and economic Involved around vocational education. In the light of their goals, the goals of technical and vocational education are specified as follows. Providing trained manpower in the applied science, technology, and business, particularly at advanced craft and technical levels. Giving training and imparting the necessary skills to individuals who shall be self reliant economically. At the tertiary education level, technical and vocational education has some of the following branches for the past group. Business education, home economics, market education, and descriptive education, students and industrial education, and cultural education. We have business education. Business education is the branch of technical and vocational education to which I belong. It was required to have sectoral education, sectoral administration, or sectoral studies in polytechnics and monotechnics earlier, and now as office technology and management in the same polytechnics and monotechnics. In colleges of education, that a blind man knows his environment better than a sighted stranger. This means that no one talks better of any profession than the one who really qualifies in it. Now, over to our elephant story. It is about an elephant and six blind men. The six blind men touched the elephant, 
one after the other. And when we were asked what they touched, each defined it according to the part it touched. This is from Popper. This is illustrated in the figure. That's okay. The first described the elephant as a wall. You can see number one there as wall, touching it as wall. The next described it as hair. That is number two as hair. Number three said it was a stick. The fourth one, yet another, called it rope. You can see number four, the tail there, rope. Another gentleman called it a fan. You can see there. The sixth called it a tree. This is according to the part they touched. These ideas about the elephant were related to their perceptions and experiences. This can be likened to the case of business education program. We have people have different perceptions about business education depending on their background and exposure. In this man in like manner, people say different things about business education. Is what it is or not. According to the job between 2007 and four pan, the responses of a group differ when asked what is business education as follows. The first man who is an example who was an example said Business education is education to produce goods and services. A radical said it is the avenue to make enormous profits. A teacher, economic concepts necessary for living in a business economy. Another teacher, learning skills to enter a business economy. Then the next person on the street said, typing and short time. And that's what we call it. So it is therefore clear that business education can be defined from the previous aspect. Perception. The last response reflects exactly the views commonly held by the majority of our people, including the learners since the program arrived in Nigeria. Any wonder the NDE, NDE report of 2004 explained that to a large extent the pace and parts of improvement of technical and vocational education, of which business education is a part, are hampered by lack of clarity over the program's fundamental purpose and goal. Nevertheless, experts in the discipline have continued to anticipate the nature of business education. Usala gave his own description as business education as an essential part of the preparation of youths for life and living. This definition, however, has obvious limitations as it focuses on youths only, instead of the broader perception perspective of doing business education as providing everyone with functional education that enables the individual self in any environment. Then, in 2004, Ostrava had another definition, which is a broader one. Then let's go to the next. We have here the objectives of business education. From the objectives now, we can understand what business education is talking about. We have to empower the individual with desirable skills, knowledge, and value to perform specific functions and to become self-reliant. To help him appreciate the world around him and contribute maximally to the social and economic development of his nation. To empower the individual in such a way that the individual will develop his intellectual capability that will help him to make informed decisions in all kinds of life. To help the individual become a judicious standard and develop proper values for the achievement of healthy living and growth of the nation. To understand the political framework of the nation so as to contribute national, to national economic development. Six, to develop personal and business attributes that will enable her live meaningfully and decently in the society to help to find an individual cultural situation that is able to make an informed decision of standing that to provide institutional opportunities for individuals preparing for the studies of higher knowledge and to understand the rules of the country. So if I can take a of the program, in business education, 
which it says that everybody must have a knowledge of business education. This is the general education. And this is the vocational education. Now, in the general education, you must still have the design of things, the design of things, the social life. You must not go to say that I don't need it. Most of us practice it without knowing that we are practicing business education. And this is the one for people who want to build a career. That's the vocation, and that's where we belong. Move on. If you look at the courses studied in business, in professional business courses studied in business education, you will see business education, is, I can tell you, is the only program who has almost all the courses studied in any of the areas of the past in the university. You can have vocational business education courses. That in all the courses, both personnel management, study law, administration, consumer education, marketing education, we study commerce, we study you have seminar, ethics, we study everything. Then you have people to do the professional education courses. You can see the curriculum, you can see the law study, you can see different psychology, you can see production to education, you can see guidance and counseling. Then you have the marketing component. You can see elements of accounting and uh, you have the accounting, the financial, the business statistics, elements of marketing, from fundamentals of government and the rest. Then the report. You can see social science and statistical, I mean statistics courses. You can see principles of economics, use of English. Now, my research on the action. Inaugural lecture. By their nature, I expected to provide the lecturer an opportunity to let the audience appreciate his or her contribution to knowledge through research. I am therefore compelled, uh, compelled to dwell to some extent in this lecture on my research efforts and contribution to knowledge, as well as the socioeconomic development of our dear country, Nigeria. Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. You already know from this lecture that business education has a large diversity. One has the able to confine himself or herself to a special area of civilization, which in my own case is office technology and management, and that's the office education. It leads to that my research efforts were focused in three major areas, namely Trained into technical and vocational education, vocational business education, teaching in curriculum and methodology, functional education and value orientation. This will guide for the discussion. Trained in vocational education. You can see the first trouble after the introduction of business studies at the junior second and secondary school level in the States. There was need for teachers to be trained to handle the teaching of subjects in human states education systems. Consequently, of all this, the grade one teachers program was set up at teachers training college, the email department, to focus for the following program, business education, public economics, and agricultural education. It therefore became imperative to have a, to conduct a follow-up study of the grade one business education program. In the United States, in 1990, the objective was to determine program effectiveness as well as the confidence in view of our solution. It was revealed that 51% of the teachers were involved in teaching subjects in law studies at the teachers' training college. Lack of teachers in other areas, as well as inadequate teaching load, we are responsible for the state of affairs. That's the job in 1990. And in 1992, another study was carried out. The study revealed the qualifications of teachers teaching business education subjects. There are barriers with the subjects taught. For instance, four teachers in master's of education in supervision and inspection taught in commerce and accounting. Why those with higher national diplomas in business and management? 
because all these men subject except shelter. Similarly, those in fashion of education, principles and methods of education, some format, we can see the educational system. This is the problem that we see as we of today. Then another study, fighting study was carried out. In this study, we wanted to find out the methodology used for the teaching of different subjects. It was discovered that the methodologies were wrong and this wrong us on the students. It was therefore recommended that professional business education, like most big studies, was be taught with the right equipment and teaching learning based on methodology as well as for the five staff. Again, another study was coming out in 1990. In Nigeria, the present status and education of people's kids, revealed that very much equipment to the first thing to learn. Natural plans, attitude of school authorities, and failure to include uh, the subject in the school type thing to other parts. These are things that have to come today. Then, we could recommend that that is Teachers should be uh, recruited and still teachers should be teaching the subject and the state of education should be provided. The findings of this project that are similar to the findings for the subject of the implementation of the state of education in 1994. Then, go down again. Another study was conducted to find out the extent to which vocational technical education we are funded in Imo State. If you look at the table, you will see that from 1998 to 1993, 10 years, you can see the money on the board there that we are allocated to this plan allowance. You can see them. They are 10 for something million. Amount is lost. No amount was actually disbursed. The money was on paper. Actual expenditure, none. It was only in 1988 that the plan allocation was 5 million, then amount disposed was only 200,000. And actual expenditure, 200,000. We can see what educational education is of. Move up again. Then, this did not stop there. We can see all this. Things. The table will speak for itself. I won't take your time, the papers will be given to you. The tables will speak for itself. Okay. In, again, in chapter 2001, coming out a study in order to access the principles and practice in the teaching of typewriting and shopping in the state secondary school in the old over and local government. 60 business teachers were used for the study. The results show that the principles are practiced in teaching the subjects we are not followed by 85% of the teachers. Similarly, the technologies used for teaching business technician subjects like shorter and tighter we are ignored by 83% of the teachers teaching shorter and tighter. This adversity affected many as the students were not able to apply the necessary skills prescribed by the curriculum for tightening and shorter. It was also observed that boys were not taught that we have students in correct pronunciation and writing position. We can see as the doctors, the lawyers use their method, I mean their technologies. That's the way we use our own. Now you can see in short term technology, we have we say dictates. But the teachers we are using, when I call the words you write. We say transcribe, they say write it out. Vocalize, they say put dots. Phrase or join the stroke, they say join or write them together. We have the reporter's notebook, but we are using excitement. Hold the pencil lightly, they say softly. Drill on the passage, they say continue writing. So we have our own terminology, but these technologies were not used. They affected the students. Then in typewriting, the same thing happened. Insert your typing sheet. They say put your paper. We don't use the word put. As the doctor said, 
administer, or just to say, administer the drugs. Or the lawyers may say clients. What? Then those in businesses we say customer. We have our own terminology. But these people we are not using the terminology. Insert your type sheet, they say put. Release your paper from the type writer, they say remove. <laughs> <laughs> As the solutions, instead of that, they say stroke. We don't say stroke, solutions. Then here, yeah, return the carriage and start on a fresh line. They say return the typewriters. We don't use that. <laughs> use the right thumb to give space. They say use the right big finger to give space. Then strike. They say hit, type. Then use the underscore. They say use the big dash. All these things. Uh, we, uh, in photo paper, we have photo full stop A4, and they say short paper, use the long paper to type. All these things are wrong, you get discovered. And in offices, they are still used today. Just like what I said, they are doctors, lawyers, women, engineers, they have their technologies. Then, another one says, since English language is uh, one out of the many languages used by communication, used for communication, and Nigeria has it as is Renoir Franca, it became necessary to find out the extent to which these test education teachers use phonetics. You can see that this test education is everywhere. Those in English know, or those in uh, literature, they know what we are talking about. Phonetics in the teaching of shorthand and determining the effect of students' writing. The assessment was based on menial peers and stress intubation, which in English they have. You can see the words here. On the linear PS, you have seen, and the is the same way, seen, seen. The students will not know what to write until during transcription, I have seen John. She committed a sin. So in this case now, when they are transcribing, they will try to make out the sense. And this is not good. So that stress education is very important. We teach it. In vowels too, it was difficult to uh, write the vowels. English, they teach vowels. In short-term vowels are taught. In vowels, we have the long vowels, we have the short vowels. But when the teachers pronounce, because discovered that the students couldn't make out the short vowels, they couldn't make out the long vowels. Then we have here. On stress intubations for pronunciation, the following words were used. You have decision, they say decision. Delay, they say delay. Below, they say below. Director, some say director. So whatever you pronounce, that is where the student is going to write. Whether it's the first place, it's the second place, or third place forward. That's what they suffer. The findings of the approach showed that 89% of the teachers who dictated a percent of 30 to 40 words a minute would not show rise and fall in their intubation. As a result, the students were heard asking whether it was a full stop, question mark, or comma. Their transcription showed that only 8% of the students were able to portray writing when compared fairly to the manuscript. Then, let's move on, please. Move on. Then there's another one again. Let us look at another study. Still on trends, Njoko and Yahaya Makari, 2007, established the level of incidence of gender inequalities in business education, same sectoral programs of Nigerian tertiary institutions from 2001 to 2005 to 2006 academic sessions. The results indicated that out of the 16 tertiary institutions offering business education program, more male students from the north study business education through sectarian than females. Prominent among these were Amad Bele University Zaria, Kano State Polytechnic. This was also the same with the lecturers. The situation was different in the east, west, and south. The reasons given were business education was perceived as female cause and you still dissented up to today. Then, the secretaries are prone to sexual harassment. Hence, this was not in true with their religion. 
as well as their culture. It was therefore recommended that there should be proper awareness of the content and objectives of the program, as well as making those in the profession to uphold the objectives of the program. In terms of moral, in moral values and teaching the course in a way that they will bring out the moral aspects of the program. This will help to reduce the long prejudice time that secretaries are wives of their bosses instead of alter eating. Also, they were not trained to be only secretaries, but have their opportunities to open, they have other opportunities open to them. The long standing myth on why women shy away from certain responsibilities in educational institutions led to this study that examined the essence of women participation in educational institutions administration in Imo State and the major constraints. This was in 1999. Again, no, no nation can adequately function without the contributions of women in all spheres of life. The study revealed administrative rigidity, fear of the senior male staff as constraints responsible for women participation in educational institutions institutional administration in new states. This is not far from what other others discovered. Yes, that administrative rigidity, fear of the studio male staff. Today as I'm standing here, I experience the same thing. How can anyone read this polytechnic? How can this polytechnic is too tough? Women should head colleges of education where you have mainly girls. So I think the thing is dying down. Then we have the next one. The society is changing and we cannot continue to teach the way we are teaching. The women should now have self-confidence, be role models, accept and seek responsibilities, as well as be able to strike a balance between office and family responsibilities, among others. If we do that, we will be able to take the administrative challenges. And the society is changing and we cannot continue to teach the way we are teaching. In those days, teachers were able to follow the children to their homes, study the date of each child and help the child where necessary and advise parents too. The situation has changed. We cannot allow the teaching to be the way it is being done. The crisis in the educational uh, sector and the society has in the 21st century prompted individuals as well as different governments to find solutions to the production of youth who have the desirable skills and attitude and knowledge. One of such solutions is the habit of the, an ideal teacher who would produce a total person. However, to have an ideal teacher in this century means that all obstacles that would hinder the building of an ideal teacher, the teaching of students and learning process must be removed. These obstacles come in form of challenges, which include, among others, technological, environmental, economical, and societal. It was on account of this that we took 2009 carrying out a study on the building of an ideal teacher of the 21st century, a new angle. In that case, we took collected data from different newspapers. You can see them there. If you look at the table there, the first one is Soto and Gomorrah, Lagos Club, where girls dance naked in daylight. You have youth skill fat normal office and men, shell workers in Bayelsa. Tears, horses, over baby, abandoned at refuge stop. This is happening every day. You can see the reference and the case there. This is happening every day. Now, Man arrested for alleged having sex with a chief. That is number six. We can see that in order to find this pattern, we must have an ideal teacher for the 21st century who can look at whatever that is happening in the society, then draw up on the curriculum that will suit the society. You can see number 11. We drink blood during initiation, cause it confess. Then we have 13, two boys. Girl the fall kidnapped the 100 billion naira ransom. Then we have 15. They are now used as collateral 
Lord with the gift of 50 naira and change it. Move on. Then you can